There's no water in the fridge. All right, let's start. Um, Matthew Lecky, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, you can push that. Just uh, identify yourselves if you could. I think Matthew knows most of you. Steve Larkin, AAP. Yeah. Matthew, just, uh, uh, just checking on your, your physically um, and your mates. I mean, obviously a short turnaround, but how you're feeling, what's the recovery process going to be like for the, for the next two days? Yeah, um, I think after the game, definitely obviously exhausted. Um, I think most of the boys were, you know, everyone threw everything at that game uh, to get the result, and it wasn't too too different to, to an easier game. So we've already been down to, to Aspatar today, um, had got our recovery in, um, and this afternoon's pretty low-key, get some rest. Um, and, yeah, I think today, tomorrow, it's going to be obviously – a major point of just getting recovery in because it's all about getting the body uh, ready and putting in another shift. And can I just check, I mean, before the game you spoke about watching the 2006 Socceroos. How do, how do you feel now that the comparisons are coming thick and fast for this squad with, with them? Yeah, I, I don't really want to compare us to them because, you know, what they did was special and I think, um, you know, last night was also special and... Um, I just think, you know, uh, the belief in this team, it's, it's, it's something special and I think that's what's got us to where we are today. Um, as I said before, uh, we had to do it like the hard way to get here first and foremost and, you know, a lot of people didn't even th expect us to be at the World Cup and um, probably thought we probably had no chance to get out of the group. So we continue to prove people wrong and, um, and believe within the group and... Uh, you know, it's knockout football now, so anything can happen. Matt, Dave Mark from the ABC. Um, you've had a night to sleep on it and reflect on scoring that goal and what a historic moment it was for the Socceroos. Can you just tell me how you're feeling about what you've achieved personally? Yeah, I'm super proud. Obviously, um, before coming into this tournament, I worked super hard to, to get myself physically fit. Um, and as I said, um, I think last time I was in here, it just turned out perfect that, you know, going into the A-League season, having six games to, to get my body in, um, you know, game shape. And, you know, I feel great. I feel like I've been able to physically have a lot of input in the field. And, um, yeah, you know, it's a moment, you know, me obviously scoring the goal to get the result. Um, it's special to me, but, you know, it's just it's a special occasion for all of us. You know, every single player out there last night gave everything. Um, you know, I think it was like Jacko ran about 12-6. Uh, it was just crazy, and that's been the success of this tournament. You know, everyone's willing to give everything. Um, win the ball, lose the ball, you know, sprint to attack and sprint to defend, and um, that's why we're, we're such a, a strong team. And please excuse me for asking this question because I know you're going to get bored by it, but um, people are going to be asking you. How, what gives you the belief that you can beat Argentina? The belief is that it's a 90 minute game, maybe 120, um, and it's a knockout game, you know. I think, as I said, because no one expected us to be here, you know, we throw everything at them and there's no real pressure for us. Uh, and as I said um, to all the boys leading into this tournament and also, um, what I believe you're going to get the best out of yourself is just do what you've done your whole career to get here and express yourself. Um, you know, I only selected all of us because he, he, he um, selected these players that would do a job and that's, you know, that what they've been doing at their clubs. Um, so we have no, no real pressure. We just need to, you know, enjoy the moment, enjoy the occasion and, uh, as I said, you know, no one expects us to win, so let's shock the world. Matt Benz from Channel 10. Are you a Ronaldo or a Messi man, and um, why? And have you considered that you could end one of the great careers, internationally speaking? Uh, I'm a Messi man. Um, I think, you know, he's naturally, you know, one of the, well, is the ta most talented player I've ever seen uh, with a ball at his feet. and. You know, he just does things that, you know, no one else can do. Um, in saying that, you know, we've come across 
great players um, last night and in this tournament. And I think, uh, you know, as long as we're a collective group, um, as we have been um, until now, um, we can, we can you know, stop them, stop their strengths, stop them from um, being dangerous. And that's what we'll try to do. And I think back at uh, the stadium where we beat Peru, right? This one. So a lot of good memories and, and good vibes there. Are we ready for another, well, miracle or magical moment? Yeah, why not? I think, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success here in Qatar. Um, obviously, we had a lot of qualifiers here um, because of the pandemic. And I think it's six wins from seven. So, you know, this is our second home. Um, conditions have been great. The stadiums, the, f uh, the fields are amazing. And, uh, you know, all three games, the atmosphere was unbelievable. And I'm sure, you know, South American countries, they always bring a great atmosphere. Their fans are, are real fanatics and um, it'll be another great occasion. G'day, Matt. Joe Barton from uh, Daily Telegraph back in the back row today. Can you talk a little bit more about um, what the recovery entails? Um, I imagine it's a little bit more than just your basic ice bales, given you've got the uh, incredible facilities at Aspatar. What, what are you actually <laughs> kind of doing in there? Yeah, look, I think everyone does their own individual thing, whatever they, what, you know, helps them. Um, there's no real restrictions on what you do or you're not, you know, obligated to do anything that you don't want to. Um, but, yeah, as you said, the, you know, they've got everything there for us. Um, you know, they've got um, Normatec guns, uh, they have the pool, you know, you can throw a bike in the pool and, and um, ride a bike in the pool. <laughs> you can uh, do everything. So, yeah, look, we're very, very lucky to, to have that. And I think it's, a, it's been a, a massive advantage, especially, you know, the intensity that we play. Um, you know, we know as a, as, a, as a team that we need to work hard, work harder and, um, you know, win our physical battles. Um, to get results. Um, like I said, that's been the success. So for us, it's massive to get our bodies right uh, for the game. And just on Saturday, um, after back-to-back -back clean sheets, you know, an extraordinary, some extraordinary individual performances and team performances, how much confidence do you have in Kai and Harry and kind of the back four um, in being able to, to do what most people think is impossible in, in shutting down uh, Messi and, and Argentina? Yeah, huge belief. You know, they've been amazing. Uh, the boys at the back, um, like I said, across the whole the whole team. You know, we always say um, defense starts at the front and attack starts at the back. And you know, when we've needed them most, the last 10, 15 minutes uh, yesterday, obviously, you know, the nature of the game, team leading one 0 there's always pressure at the end. You know, Denmark were pushing us, and you know, the boys, you know, handled everything. Um, there were so many balls in the box and we were always first to it. Um, you know, Matty had to, to step up on a few occasions. You know, he came out strong, grabbed one. Um, you know, he made some, some key, uh, you know, decisions. And, yeah, I don't think many, well, anyone put a foot wrong in it last night. And those of us, that's what we need to do. We, we need everyone there. Um, and... We all have our individual qualities, but our biggest quality is um, us collectively as a team. Um, if we're not a team on the on the night, um, you know, it's it's not going to work. Hey, Lex, um, Clint from Nine, mate. Uh, well done. I just want to ask you about your home city, and it's going off its head right now. Um, your thoughts on what you're seeing, the sort of injection it gives you, the boost it gives you, and and sort of the uh, hero grams or messages you've been receiving from home, if I can. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I think, uh, you know, I've seen a, a few videos of uh, Fed Square last night, obviously. Um, you know, last night, Tunisia game, flares going crazy. Um, you know, it's it just the place erupting. I, I think I saw, you know, someone... Um, sort of doing footage there and even the guy sort of hosting it or, you know, with the mic, he was, he was going crazy as well. And um, that's what, you know, the World Cup does. That's what the soccer is um, being at the World Cup does. And 
it's massive for the game. Um, it's massive for everything. It's massive for, for kids that maybe don't know too much and they see it and you know it inspires them to, to want to be footballers. Um, so we're proud of that. Um, as I said before, um, I used to be you know a proud fan, a young boy um, that was supporting and, and now there's a new generation and we're, we're lucky enough to you know be in a position where we can make an impact. And I think last night we definitely did. Hey, just before Craig, um, I should also point out that Matt Lecky and Mac Ryan will play their 10th World Cup match against Argentina, breaking an all-time Australian record. Sorry, Craig. Uh, uh, Matt, Greg If Paul, they get picked, uh, yeah. Melbourne Age. Uh, we keep hearing from Arnie about how much he detests social media and fears it's going to sabotage your campaign and he wants you to avoid it. Are you complying and are your teammates complying? Um, I think initially after the game, obviously there's a lot of um, movement across social media. Um, people that know me, I'm pretty bad on social media. I probably should be more into it because, you know, there's obviously f fans that uh, want to see what's going on. Um, but, yeah, I think last night, obviously, boys are looking over what's been said, um, as you know, it's a huge occasion, huge moment, huge scenes, a lot of videos. Um, so definitely there's obviously boys on social media, but today and tomorrow, um, try to stay away from it. And, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm not massively on it all the time. Um, and on my personal social media, I probably could do better, <laughs> even if it's just football related. Um, at the stage, um, you know, that's the, the information he's giving us and I think a lot of the boys are taking on board. Um, the ones that aren't, it hasn't affected them because, you know, I think we were amazing last night. Uh, Matt, Joey Lynch from ESPN. Forgive me for going very parochial, but last night you also became the first Victorian to ever score a goal in a World Cup for Australia. I know you would have represented Victoria as a youngster, maybe gone to Coffs Harbour. What does that stat mean to you? First, I didn't know, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's good. I think, uh, you know, I don't like to dwell or talk too much about what I've achieved. I think that's something I can do one day when I, when I, when I finish up my career. Um, I think the reason why I've, always, I've had a, a relatively good career. You know, being overseas for a long time and had the, you know, been lucky enough to, to be in the Australian setup for so long is because even when I've had success or, you know, there's been moments where in football you're sometimes right at the top and there's times where you're right at the bottom. And I always try to stay in the middle regardless of the occasion. So just humble, head down, work hard and, you know, I think on the field, that's when I play my best. Is when, you know, I'm getting into the, into the battle, throwing my body around, and uh, that's why I've, I think I've had a good career. Matty Vince Rigari from the Sydney Morning Herald. Um, I know you, you just said you don't really like talking about yourself and your career, but um, I'll, I'll try anyway. You've, you've had a fantastic career at club and international level, but. You know, your heights at club level have been in the Bundesliga, which is not a league that a lot of Aussies watch particularly much. They're, they're very much Premier League obsessed. Um, do you feel like some aspects of your career have gone under the radar back home? Does that even matter to you? And does it feel like that's changing a little bit with the goal you scored last night? Um, I don't really care, to be honest. <laughs> um, I just think uh, there's always opinions uh, in in the whole in everything in the world. Um, sports, obviously, um, everyone has an opinion and they're entitled to an opinion. Um, I think the biggest thing for a footballer is um, whether the opinions are positive or negative that it doesn't affect you, and you see it sometimes um, positive. Um, I guess. The way people talk about a player could, um, you know, affect them in a bad way um, because you know they sort of, you know, get 
in the spotlight too early and maybe they don't ex exceed um, their expectation. Um, and then there's players that obviously have, you know, had negative feedback in the past and it's really affected them in their careers. So I try to stay away from it and that's why I'm probably not on social media and that stuff too much because um, there's always opinions, you know, the best players in the world in every sport, they have um, people that love them and people that hate them. So um, for me, the most important thing is, is that my, basically the, the people that I'm involved with, whether it's at club level, country, uh, and my, play, my teammates, um, you know, believe in me and, um, you know, basically rate me as, <laughs> as a player, uh, the rest doesn't really matter. Fair enough. Uh, on a much lighter note, just following up from what Joe was asking before about recovery, one of the things Arnie mentioned you would be doing is playing a bit of cricket around the place, which I think we've seen some videos of you guys in the in the Aspire hallways and such. Who who goes all right? And also just how important is it to do stuff like that just to keep things light, you know, and fun around the place? Because it's serious business, a World Cup, but it's also important to be able to switch off and have fun when you're, when you're not training or playing. Yeah, for sure, the switching off part is, is really, really key. I think, um, you know, we're, we're in the zone and we're focused um, when we need to be, but definitely need switching off time. And, you know, we've got an amazing facility with a lot of things to do. You know, there's pool, there's table tennis, boys are playing Call of Duty, I'm one of them. And, uh, you know, there's the, the cricket, I think, in Dom's room in the kit room. He's got a little shop set up where, you know, you've got to, last one over and you can take something out of the, the shop but uh, Dom didn't know day one I took about three or four things and he didn't know so I don't, I don't play <laughs> I'm all good um, Matt you mentioned that Jackson ran a lot last night but you've done 30 odd thousand metres over the last three games and run the fastest your top speed last night was 33 kilometres an hour um, would you be able to sustain that Will the adrenaline of a game against Argentina allow you to sustain that with such a short turnaround? And also, there's a bunch of younger guys in the team who are not getting anywhere near as quick as you. Do they need to pull their fingers out? Uh, yeah, look, I think, uh, you know, after the Tunisia game, everyone was knackered, tired, um, and we knew, you know, we had to do all the right things to get ready for the, the Denmark game. And... You know, I think in the first five, ten minutes of the game, you know, players were looking a little bit sluggish, um, you know, tired, and then it just switched, and maybe that was just because of, you know, a few things, but mentality, you know, got us over the line. You know, we, we absorbed the pressure in the first ten minutes, and then I felt for the rest of the game, you know, everyone looked really good. Um, I'm sure, you know, there's players feeling pain, couple of uh, bit of niggles here and there uh, going into the game but once you're out there those things don't matter and um, I'll do everything I can to back it up obviously um, you know I've obviously the last couple of games been you know I had a bit of cramping at the end um, but I always want to be out there I want to try to you know do everything I can to yeah do something for the team, do something for the country and um, create these special moments. And um, that's what everyone's doing. You see the mentality. That's why, we, you know, we're going on about it so much with the belief in mentality. But without that, we wouldn't be here we are, where we are today. Matty, I know you're very focused on looking forward, but can I just get you to reflect for a moment on your journey to get here? Because you did kind of take the scenic route into professional and international football. Yeah, uh, if I talk about the whole thing, it'll go for a while because I've obviously been playing for a while now. Um, yeah, I think, you know, the way I sort of started my career, you know, it was different to many others. You know, I wasn't really in any um, institutes. Um, I played state a little bit. And I was actually injured going into a uh, normal season missed the whole season and then I, I played a summer league that existed back then and it's just a normal game um, and I got a phone call it was my agent who's still my agent today um, and he said oh, I watched a game I want to sign you so he came to see my dad came to see me 
my dad straight away said to him, just look after him and uh, we'll sign. <laughs> so that's what happened. And then I happened to get in the under-19s uh, national team. I'd never been in a, a national team before that. Did all right and then came home and on the last day of um, deadline day, I signed Adelaide United. And I had signed to be a youth team player um, and train with the first team. And then within three weeks, I was on the bench. Scored against North Queensland and that's it. That's how it started. And then didn't look back. Um, there's not much to say. It's too hard to explain at all. I think what's made my career is just my work rate, my, my fight. I think uh, there's probably a lot more gifted people than me um, in the country. But one thing I think that gets me over the line or makes me have the career I've had is, um, you know, my mentality and my work rate. And when I'm in my best shape, um, which I feel I am today, you know, I physically have so much input um, and I, I feel that in the games, you know, we're playing against great players, but I can feel I'm physically better than them. Um, and I always just try to make it a tough night for them, tough day for them. Um, and yeah. All right, we've run out of time. Um, we've been on Instagram live, this press conference, Matt, and Martin Boyle has said, hurry back, we've war zone to play. So with that, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, guys.